Hi badminton fans, I am badminton ball. Like everyone else, I am also a very enthusiastic badminton fan. And I am here today to share to y'all a little study of mine, which I myself find very interesting. Now as a hardcore supporter of this sport, I follow and watch a ton from the professional badminton scene. If you are like me, then there must have been moments when you wonder what is this player's style, what are his favorite shots, what is he likely to do next, does he improve over the tournaments, etc. And of course, we all kinda get the gist of it, or the general impression for the answers for these self-asked questions. But at the same time we are not so sure. Therefore, I think to myself wouldn't it be awesome if there is some definite proof to your impressions. With those proofs, I believe we can watch the game from a more strategic point of view rather than just focusing on how the players execute their exquisite techniques on the court. Hence, I decide to embark myself on the journey to find out these proofs. I will record everything that happens in the match into information and then try to extract insights from the data. Due to the sophistication of this quest, I will not think too far ahead. I will only focus on each small step at the time in this journey to unlock all insights from the players in the badminton scenes. This is the mission of this channel, and the reason why I am born today. The first series will be simple, I will study the finishing attack patterns from the backcourt of the Pro S, which usually are the smashes. Let's start with male single, since the smashes of single match is more calculated and decisive than the smashes of double, and it's easier to track too. I will only record the attacking attempts from the back of the court. Because smashing from the midcourt or close net is almost a sure point winning, there's not much decision making in those situations. I will divide the backcourt into three sections, left, middle, and right. Now for shots choice, I will include, the full smash for smashes with almost 100% effort, half smash for less power and more accuracy smashes, and drop shot with jumping effort. I am aware that a clear shot can also be counted as an attack, but I will not include the clear shot here, because I think if a player chooses to do a clear shot, then he wants to build up the rally more rather than finishing the rally. I will also not include the standing drop shots or standing smashes, since they are played to build up the rally, not to try to earn points directly. Now for the direction of the attacking shots, I will also divide it into, left, middle, and right. The final category of this study will be the results of the attacking shots. I decide them to be, point winning for direct point, advantage, for shots that unbalance the opponent, or open next opportunity to attack, neutralized, for good defense from the opponent, and out, for shots that do not go over the net, or get called out. There should be countered option 2 for shots that the opponent earn points from the defense. But I decide to merge it into the neutralized as well so as not to make it too complicated, at least for my brain. I have sketched a simple table for data input, which is useful for later analysis. The first pro for this study series will be Mr. Zhou Tian Chen from Taiwan. Why? Because I like him. Oh! Yeah. For this study to be somewhat relevant and significant, I choose the most recent matches of him. Also, at least 100 observations need to be made to be able to draw some conclusion out of the database. The first match to observe is Yonex Thailand Open 2021, Zhou Tian Chen oh, against NG Kalong. What a shot! I will watch the match again, but focusing only on the attacking this attempts the from Zhou Tian Chen at the back court, then manually the input the observations into the table. As the match goes on and on and with my mind fully That's concentrating on the attacking Zhou patterns, Tian, I have the impression that Zhou Tian Chen is clearly deadlier from the around the head situation. He seems to score more direct points from smashes from his backhand corner. And he also spends more effort to produce attacks from this left side. On the other hand, when opportunity appears on his forehand side, he opts to continue building the rally, or his attacks are easily neutralized regardless of his attacking choices. Speaking of attacking choices, he rarely uses drop shot as a finishing move. 
but when he does, his drop shots to the right corner of the net is more likely to score points than the left. There might be many reasons for these. Maybe his high frequency of attacks on the left side is part of his way of building the rally, making his opponent lift to his backhand corner more. Maybe the opponent defense is stronger when facing his forehand attacks, which makes his right side attack not effective and he doesn't make effort to attack from that side as much. These are all first impressions, speculations. This is just one match, definite conclusion is impossible. And I mean... If he can yes. control the drift like that, then, uh, then he has an Averagely, he makes 13 to 14 finishing attacks per game in this match. If this average number is not deviated much from Chu's usual games, oh, then I only need to watch two more games to input enough 100 observations for the study. Second match for the study is World Tour Final 2020, Zhou Tian Chen against Anthony Sinisuka Jinting. This match lasts for two games with Zhou being the victorious. The takeaways from this match is that Joe attacking shots are neutralized much more by Jinting when compared to NG Kalong. This is obviously because Jinting defense is much better than NG Kalong. Everyone knows Jinting is a highly offensive player with one of the fastest footwork there is in the badminton scene now. So I think that Joe wouldn't get as many chances to produce attacks like in the NG Kalong match. In fact, the rallies are built longer, stretching both players one not yielding to another. How wrong I am, the table shows me that after two games, Joe attempts to attack from the back corner 25 times, averagely 12.5 per game, which is the same number as in NG Kalong match. Third match is the World Tour Final 2020, Joe Tian Chen against Victor Axelson. This match is also two games long. However, Victor is the winner. One interesting point I can take from this match is that, in the first game, almost all of Chu's backcourt attacks are from his favorite left side, which results in a very close game from both players. In the second game, as if Victor Axelson's coach has figured Joe out, when Victor has to lift, he always lifts to the forehand side of Joe Tian Chen, his less preferable corner. And the most Joe can get out of those situations are advantages. He couldn't get a single direct point winning attacking shot from that side. The second game is a landslide win for Victor Axelson. And again, 13 attempts per game in this match. This number seems to hold true for Zhou Tian Chen game. Unfortunately, after three matches, the table is short of nine more observations to make the 100 sample quota. So I have to watch another match. This time, a little bit further back, all England 2020, Round 16, Zhou Tian Chen against Kantatsuniyama. This is a very interesting three-game match. A short key takeaway from this match is that Zhou Tian Chen didn't make a single attacking drop shot at all back in All England 2020. While in the previous three matches in 2021, his drop shots, although much less frequent than smashes, are very deadly and effective when executed. This means that Zhou Tian Chen actually does improve and makes an effort to expand his attacking toolbox over the past year. I find this point very interesting. It may sound obvious that every athlete always strives to improve himself, but we usually do not get to see clearly what they have changed under the naked eyes. Oh, it's not coming over. That's my left. That's high. That's very high. Good play by Suniyama once again. High skill level. Now the table is complete with a total of 123 observations. It's time to do some data cooking. The analysis is simple, I just use some pivot tables to see what is the story behind Chu's set of data. Out of 123 attempts, 63 are from around the head, Chu's left side. Over 50% of the attacking attempts are from the left. Meanwhile, 18% are from the middle and the rest are from the right side. 
so it is true that Joe spends more effort to produce attacks from the left. So how effective are his attacks from the left compared to those from the middle or right? Out of 63 attempts from the left, 27 are direct points winning, about 42% of the attempts, 9 are advantages, 14%. So if combine both the advantages and points winning, 56% of the times Joe attacks from around the head, a point is expected, that's a whopping 1 out of 2 times. While only 1 out of 4 times Joe attacks from the right is a point guaranteed. It's clear that his left side is far more dangerous. When attacking from the left, 49%, 31 out of 63, are full smashes, 35%, 22 out of 63, are half smashes, and the rest are drop shots. On the other hand, on the right, 67%, 25 out of 37, are full smashes, and only 21% are half smashes, 8 out of 37. It seems that Joe is more comfortable and can produce more variety of attacks on the left side. While on the right side, he is prone to use full power to keep the rally going. Speaking strictly of drop shots, 10 attempts are made from the left, while other 7 are made from the middle and the right. All of the drop shots deployed from the right are either neutralized or out. Two drop shots from the middle to the net right corner are point winnings. Five out of ten drop shots from the left are either advantages or point winnings, four of those five shots are to the right corner of the net. So, drop shots from his forehand corner are bad, if not to say totally harmless. But drop shots from the other two positions are very effective, especially when directed at the right net corner. Now that I have studied the attacking patterns of Joe, what can I get out from it? Well, if I have to lift for him to attack, I will lift to his forehand side, since on that side, all of his attacks are overwhelmingly less dangerous, especially the drop shots. His drop shots from the forehand side are so harmless that you can practically pay no mind to it. And he's likely to full smash all the time too.